Hello, I'm Andy Smith, Appreciative Inquiry Facilitator. Let's talk about the neuroscience of Appreciative Inquiry. Advances in brain imaging technology from the 1990s onwards enabled researchers to discover two networks in the brain that in some ways are in opposition to each other. The task positive network is activated when you engage in cognitive tasks, perception, motor control, and problem solving, including logical analysis. It tends to produce stressful feelings, activating the so-called sympathetic nervous system. The network known as the default mode network, on the other hand, enables big picture thinking, engagement, motivation, stress regulation, and social and relationship awareness. It's associated with positive emotions, trust, and feeling supported. The two networks are opposing domains in the sense that when one network is active, it inhibits the other. Analytic thinking fires up the task positive network, but it also turns off the default mode network. On the other hand, empathic thinking activates the default mode network and suppresses the task positive network. So a balance between task positive network and default mode network is essential for open communication, creativity, and working together effectively. We need to have our default mode network active when we're bonding as a team, when we're taking in new information, and especially when we need to come up with creative solutions to challenges. Then ideally, after that, we go into task positive mode to carry out those solutions. Usually in the workplace, we don't have any difficulty in activating the task positive network. We're in that mode most of the time as we work down our to-do list and aim to meet targets and hit deadlines. Unfortunately, the side effects include defensiveness, lack of trust, seeing other people as either a means to an end to get your goals achieved or as threats or blocks to achieving your goals. Stress, reluctance to try new ways of working and a focus on short-term results rather than longer-term and bigger picture aims. It's when challenges hit that we most need to go into default mode network to learn from each other and break out of the thinking that led to the problems in the first place. So how to encourage greater activation of the default mode network in the face of the pressures of organizational life? Fortunately, appreciative inquiry encourages default mode network activation and positive emotion in a number of ways. Just being listened to with 100% attention activates the default mode network. When people are asked about their strengths, their achievements and things they're proud of, they become less defensive and they open up more. It's easier to like and trust other people when they're talking about their best experiences, their deepest values and their aspirations for the future. When they reconnect with their values, what's important to them, they become more resilient and they have more of a sense of purpose. Emotional resonance. When one person starts to experience the same emotions as another, when like they catch emotions off each other, helps people to bond. Positive emotion helps people to engage their visual creative imagination. Problem-focused approaches emphasize external forces and constraints that can lead to feelings of being judged and self-consciousness. Appreciative inquiry, by contrast, evokes a sense of safety and self-empowerment that encourages new ideas and scanning the environment for possibilities. Now that we know about these two networks, we can see that if you were to get too analytical, as we do in traditional problem analysis mode, you risk flipping your group back into task positive network thinking and shutting down the default mode network that they need to find creative solutions and aspirational goals. This is why in appreciative inquiry, we focus first on what's working and on positive exceptions. Even if they're few and far between, we'll find them if we look for them.